Yes, by next Sunday. By next Sunday. It's also the last week to get on the Lancaster trip if you want to go to that. Um, okay, those are the two big ones you make sure I have to say. There's also 55 over luncheon. It will be uh, March 25th. And the April May newsletter due then. If you have anything you want in. And finally, I think Michelle has something to do. Good morning, everyone. Um, we at the church, we're going to be hosting an Easter dinner for the community on Saturday, April 3rd from 4 to 6. If you would like to donate your time, money, or food um, for the Easter community meal, please contact the church. We can see Deb, Sherry, or I. Um, also, we have a board back there. If you would like to do a monetary donation, you can just put your money in that and hand it to Deb or Sherry. Um, we really do appreciate everybody's help, so thank you very much. So again, we're going to have an Easter meal for the community on April 3rd, 3rd. Saturday. Whatever that Saturday is. Saturday. Yeah, 4 to 6. Saturday we're going to the out. And uh, it's, I think, a hand dinner. Yeah. So you know, we can sign up for all of that. We need desserts. We need some cakes. Rolls. I help you with it. Any others? Yes. Go ahead. I have, I'm working on the older flowers. May still, I have three Sundays in April. I have April, one day is April 11th, one April 18th, and one April 25th. Uh, I also will have more throughout the year, up to October, I believe now. So anybody who's interested in the vase of flowers, they're $15. See me, I will put this back in the back, and you can sign one of the open spaces if you like. Call me, uh, text me. And let me know like, if you're interested in flowers. And for those of you who already have flowers, I'm trying to contact everybody in case somebody wants to change it or switch it. So, again, if you want to do that, you can get in touch with me. Thank you. Let us begin our worship service. It's okay.
song of worship followed by the opening prayer. We hunger for the love of God. We nourish each other with the word of God. We celebrate the word made flesh in Jesus Christ. We come to become humble in the dwelling place for the spirit of the living God. Amen. O oh, Lord, how often we have filled your church with hustle and bustle. Forgive us, O oh, Lord, for trying to fill sacred space with things not of your spirit. May we be aware of the differences between a dead silence and living stillness. May we be spiritually steeped in the holiness of divine presence, that we would see you in each other, thereby transforming our lives into true worship unto you. Amen.
hearts this morning to receive communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to the it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love has remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark of the water and saved Noah and his family and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to, to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sins, your spirit led him into the wilderness. There he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on the cross for our sins, you raised him to life and presented him alive to his apostles going 40 days, and you exalted him on your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for this yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance of sins, cleansing of our hearts, and that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted in grace to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And again he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and drink. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these acts of our Lord Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us here. Upon these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to the entire world until Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at that heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The 
body of Christ given for you. Take and eat in remembrance. And the blood of Christ poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of him. All praise be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit and his Holy Church. Amen. Greet one another this morning. Give each other a wave. Say hi to them. Check out who your neighbor is with today. <laughs> I need to recognize Dr. Sepp when she's wearing her mask because that's what she's <laughs> Let's pray for our offering this morning. Gracious and loving God, as we give to you, whether it's through the internet or whether it's uh, here or whether we're mailing it, Lord God, these are our gifts to you, given from the many gifts that we receive from you, the blessings of our lives. Pray, Lord, that what we give will be appreciated for the work that put into uh, earning the money and that the gift that is given from those earnings. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you will multiply our gifts in their work for the work of the church and the king. And all glory be to you, O Heavenly Father. Amen. <laughs> We have a praise here too. We have children in the church today. Disciples. Oh, they went home. Oh, we had children in the. We had children in the church today. <laughs> Let's go to our prayer time then with our prayer again. Uh, the gift of love is for a week.
this morning for this opportunity to worship you today. Heavenly Father, we have seen a lot of things in life, a lot of changes around us. Lord God, let us not forget who we are as Christians. Our call to love one another, our call to reach out, to provide hope, to provide grace, to provide love through your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we have lifted up many, many concerns this morning. Concerns from health concerns and addictions, upcoming surgeries. Concerns for a family who lost it. Concerns for those who are still grieving the loss of loved ones. Heavenly Father, all of this that is on our hearts. Concerns for a person needing a job. Lord, we lift this all up. Knowing, oh, Heavenly Father, you know these needs, and you know these concerns, and you know these hurts. Lord, hear us. Reach out your love and answer prayers as you have been answered. Prayers for a new job for Dick. Prayers for a safe return for Rachel after her mission trip. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for her service to you. Thankful, Lord, Heavenly Father, for these vaccines and, and these opportunities to try to get people to get back together, to get to a place where the mask won't be necessary, and that we don't have to stay away from each other, where a hug is, will be felt together. Lord, help us to get So that not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, we can become more whole. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for journeying through with us through the battle. And until we're on the other side, to continue to walk with us as we seek those green pastures of scriptures. Lord Heavenly Father, we lift our prayers to you this day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is a gospel reading from John chapter 2, starting with verse 13. This is from the lectionary. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple, and he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers. He overturned the tables. He told those who were selling the doves to take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you're going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body after he was raised from the dead. His disciples remembered that. He had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Merge right, merge right, merge right, 
and then you're merged over, and then this guy goes, like, you know, the sign doesn't pertain to me. Those are just pet peeves. Nothing to get too worked up about. Like the toilet paper roll, when it's there and only has one sheet dangling off of it, it's a little bit of a pet peeve, you know? A little bit. But it's nothing that's going to make you say, you know, get just drive you crazy. It's not, oh, Jesus is coming. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but there are other things that are more than just pet peeves. There's, there's more like, a, let's call them hot buttons. Hot buttons. Stuff that really upsets you. Really makes you. And they're all over the place, these hot button, button things. Mine are usually pertaining to the treatment of people. When I, when I see people that are homeless and having to scrounge for food, it's a hot button thing for me. I want, I don't, how in America are we, are we like that? Are we got to live hungry? We're homeless. Another thing that bothers me is bullying. My, uh, bullying really upsets me. Picking on other kids, picking on people, gossiping about them, shunning them. Those things are, to me, are hot fun for me. Polluting. That drives me crazy when I see somebody had dumped their garbage and didn't, you know, can't take the refrigerator to the dump. It might cost them $10 or something, and they dump it over the side of the hill. By your favorite crib. With your microwave and all the other stuff that can tires that they could figure out. Another thing that upsets me is it is is treat of animals. I I want to treat animals right. If you're going to have a pet, treat them right. Take care of them. Make sure they got food, make sure they got water. Take them out, exercise them, spend time. Those are my hot button types. Sure, I have more. <laughs> I'm sure. And she shakes her head. I don't know. I don't know. But what does it take, though, to have courage to face those hot buttons? You see the guy, you know, throw a couple tires over that are you willing to pull over and say, hey, what are you doing? Cut that out. We take a, a, a person who's hungry and, and provide a meal for them. Or get them in the direction of a shelter or someplace to stay warm. Get them a coat, a pair of boots. That bothered me when I thought I'm going on the page now. Anyway, I, I remember listening to a radio station, and it was uh, at particularly a Pittsburgh Steeler game. It was, it was cold out. And I remember people were calling in and talking about homeless, but there are certain homeless people around the stadium that kind of get reputations and you know who they are, you know, the bird lady and the violin guy and the, you know. And one guy said, I don't give nothing to them people. I saw a guy have a hundred dollar pair of boots on. And I thought to myself, if a person's cold, wouldn't you want them to spend the money you gave them on something like a pair of boots to stay warm? It's not our place to judge that. But again, hot button issues like this. Today, we don't want to put ourselves out there and be vulnerable to say something to the person abusing the pet, or say something to the person uh, dumping uh, toxins. Instead, we got other buttons we hit. We use the buttons on our phones. We call up the Child Protective Services, or we should call the other agencies, the EPA, or, or Social Services, or the State Police, or 911. We make those calls. But this intervene directly to get in between, to be vulnerable. So what do we do? When do 
Sometimes our pet peeves become our hot buttons. Like the guy who was in Seattle, he was driving down the road, and a young kid passed him up on the highway. He's got mad. He tailgated this kid for five miles. The veteran pulled up beside him and shot him. Fortunately, the young man lived, but still, was that worth getting that angry over? I love the story our Bishop Pickerton used to tell when he was a pastor down in West Virginia. He says, I always drive in the right-hand lane, and when I, I go five miles over the speed limit, it talks. And one day I was passing, and I only, like I said, I only go five miles over the speed limit, and there was a pickup truck behind me, and he was tooting his horn at me, wanting me to get over, and eventually I do, and the guy drove past me and gave me the finger. And he said, you should have saw the look on his face when he realized he had I was his pastor. <laughs> and he said, the following Sunday, he came up and says, Pastor, if I knew that was you, he says, it shouldn't have happened. Shouldn't have happened. You know, we've gotten to a place, I think, that we're becoming immune almost to the terrible stories, to stories of genocide, to stories of, uh, uh, of starvation, to the plight of our fellow people. Like the folks down in Texas, you know, this winter storm, hungry and without water, without warmth. Get callous. Jesus amazingly takes a separate approach from, from us. We, you know, instead of getting hot over the little things, Jesus did wait until it was a big. Take a look at the feeding of the five thousand. Jesus spent the whole day teaching and preaching and healing others. You know, he, he wasn't the one who came up with the idea of giving him something to eat. He never thought about the food. His disciples thought about the food. They said, these people are hungry. We need to go get them something. They sent them away so they get something to eat. It was then that Jesus said, well, here's an opportunity. Let us be. He didn't get worked up over the, that people were hungry. When he got pulled into his kangaroo court and he faced his tormentors who were taunting him and, and, and pulling his beard out and punching him in the face and spitting on him, never said a word. He never said a word. But in today's gospel text, somebody pushed that Holy Spirit button on him. And you wonder. Everything that was happening was a legal commerce. People were coming to the temple for the uh, Passover. And Josephus writes in the history books that about 300,000 people would come to the Passover in Jerusalem. And they were going there for the ritual services to sacrifice an unblemished animal, or if you're poor, to you, a dove or a pigeon to be used to, for a sacrifice. And where were you going to get those? You would get them off of people selling them there, the merchants that were there. And you would change your money from one region to the next, and you'd have to go to the money changer to get your Persian money changed into Roman money or whatever. And pay your temple tax. So you're paying your temple tax and you're making your sacrifices. All of what's legal cause. But what set Jesus off? Set him off where? This is my father's house. This is a place of worship, not of cause. 
this is separate from what's going on outside. Even though you need to buy a sheep to bring to the sacrifice, you don't have to buy it in my temple, in this place of worship. That was separate. That's what got him whip cracking mad. That's what got him Holy Spirit hot. The temple was turned into a marketplace. The money changers turned their holy ob obligations into a lucrative practice. He got mad at the Passover pilgrims who saw the temple as a place to transact business and not to remember the holy work of God and his holy presence in their lives. He was mad at the priests who had let their love of the law and their rituals take precedent over their love of God. And he got mad because of the pointless sacrifices of all the innocent blood that was shed and not the hearts that were turned back to God. They hit his hot button in his father's house to the point when he was challenged and said, why, what authority? Now, you've got to remember this. This is written in the second chapter of John. In John, Jesus had three pilgrimages to Jerusalem. This was the first. Now, in the other Gospels, the other the, the uh, synoptic Gospels, it happens later on when Jesus comes into the temple, rides the donkey in, cleanses the temple, all that will happen in there. But in John, he puts it early. Because this is going to be a mark of his ministry moving forward. That he was there with authority. And his voice was a voice for God. He got mad for God's sake. He got mad for God's sake. Folks, our churches today, they're divisive and they, and, and they struggle. We're pushed at general conference back another year. The 2020 general conference will now be 2022. That protocol will continue to linger over the church as to what to do with uh, issues of uh, human sexuality. There's a plan to make a global Methodist church that will be divided from the United Methodist Church, traditional church. Question is, in all this division and all that language, where's Christ? Where's the love of God? Where's the worship? Where's the Holy Spirit? That's what the church needs to be focused on. That is where Jesus wants the church focused on. Not the building, not nothing, not all the, the uh, doctrines. But on the Spirit of God in our lives and, our, and, and God's presence in it. That's where the church needs to go. And that's where the church needs to go. Looking at how we can serve God and serve the Spirit and do so and walking with our own relationship with God intact along. But we disagree. So there's going to be things that people, that people get mad about. But are they truly things that are going to be bringing us closer to God or pushing us away from our relationship? We're to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. That should be the focus of the church. Today and moving forward. And in His holy name. Our closing hymn today is Freely, Freely.
you shine upon us. May the Lord lift up his confidence to you and give you peace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And don't forget to turn your clocks ahead next week. Clocks ahead next week.